good evening. And a fellow baseball nuts and a very warm welcome to episode 25 of the Johnny and Josh Show. Well, I can tell you we've all been very, very busy. Uh, and so this is possibly a first that we've dragged JC out of his workplace for a quick half hour record. And I've got Eric as well. Boys, how are you both? So good to see you, Goldie. You look nicely dressed. You've been doing the business, it looks like. Five minutes ago, I was on stage doing an auction for uh, two members of the Saracens 200 Club, the legends that are now retired Brad Barrett, uh, ex-England, and uh, still playing Alex Good, who, of course, um, was uh, was an England international. Many people think should have played many more times. He was European Player of the Year in 2019. They've both got over 200 caps for Saris, and Saris, a big reason why they've been such a successful rugby club, um, just like all the abuse they've received for. Uh, d- 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 does Eric have a waffle? Because my oh, God, sorry. I, mean, I just said you look nicely dressed. <laughs> Is this, it's a valid um, point, mate. It's a valid point. I was flying off tell, remind telling me, my Sarri story. Remind me, again, apologize, remind me again, this is a baseball show, right? Is it it was, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I raised 81,000 points. So, um, well done. Very Gordy. pleased with that, mate. Very pleased with that. Well and done, two man. wonderful, the Saracens Foundation and the Matt Hanson Foundation. So that is why I'm dressed in answer to your question. And as you know, I like to use 10 words when one will do. What have you been up to, Eric? Not much. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, um, the good news, the number 25 in the Bible symbolizes grace upon grace, not possibly a description that I would apply to either of you. Um, But the number 25 apparently denotes wisdom with a touch of diplomacy and curiosity. Well, JC, you're bringing the wisdom. Uh, I think possibly, Eric, is more about the diplomacy. Uh, Diplomacy that a certain Mr. Chris Sale hasn't got, in my view, uh, given the fact that he's chosen not to be vaccinated. And as part of our COVID update... Um, bit gutted to hear that uh, I think he's tested positive. He's he's back now. He was though. He was test. He did test yeah. positive. We had discussed this last week, Gouldy, and uh, you know I was hoping beyond hope that this was. I mean, awful any which way you get COVID, but I was hoping it was a breakthrough case because I didn't want to believe that he wouldn't choose the the vaccine route. Um, Disappointed with any player who does that, uh, definitely loses a little bit. I guess everyone has a right to their own uh, decision-making process, but uh, it it does no good for, for the community. But there are rumours, aren't there, that the MLB will require managers, coaches, athletic tra- I mean, anybody that's, that's associated, even non-playing personnel, to get COVID-19 vaccines in order to gain access to the, to the field. I mean, I, I, interesting, because you're a lawyer, JC. Could they legally do that? Could they prevent people from being involved if they're not vaccinated? I mean, there are ways in which you could try and argue that. You have certain personal rights that you could probably argue if there was a religious cause. Uh, but these are private businesses. And you know, if yeah. there's health and health overrides, then uh, they, they probably have a lot to stand on. I mean, there's definitely a press, at least from the president of the United States now, Joe Biden, uh, to, to get even more serious about this, um, that it's just, it's too much. If you go to Washington, D.C. right now and you look out from uh, the Washington Monument, there are little white flags representing every American who's passed away because of COVID, more than 600,000 of them. And it's a really uh, sad sight to see. And, uh, you know, this show is not about this subject either as eric pointed out it's about baseball but uh you know when baseball players are making the wrong choice here it's, it's hard to swallow yeah absolutely um just before we move on with uh, an update on the canadian border situation i would also like to mention the number 25 and it's it's notoriety um uh, certainly we've got three players who's the number 25 has been retired uh, jose cruz being one jim tomey of course was one of my big favorites from uh from our era of doing channel five baseball and perhaps I mean, I think it would be true to say the greatest player of his generation, but not the most popular, Mr. Barry Bonds. Well, it's funny you describe what 25 represents. You talk about wisdom and grace. Uh, Barry Bonds had a lot of quality, qualities. I don't know if wisdom and grace were amongst his, his top attributes. So uh, interesting choice of numbers for him based on your, your research, Goldie. Oh, you I love Jim Tomer, though. Did you like Jim Tomer, Eric? Of course, we met him a couple of hey, times, didn't we? Yeah, lovely guy. Of course, just got you know was inducted into the Hall of Fame 2018. So, uh, will we ever see that other 25 uh, wearing guy Barry Bonds inducted into the Hall of Fame? Time will tell. I, I, well, there's not much time to tell. There, true, Aaron. true. He's got I mean, one he's year, got, isn't yeah. he, JC? Yeah, and we, you, you and I, Goldie, have talked a lot about this. And yeah. uh, to me, he's he's got to get in this year. I think it's wrong. Of baseball. I know he is definitely uh, 
you know, a tarred candidate, but there are tarred people in the Hall of Fame. He's paid his time. Other players who were under the the shadow of of performance enhancing drugs, but maybe weren't caught are in there now. At this point, I think you just have to open up and say he was the best player of his era and regardless of what the other elements were. And And let's be honest, he would have gone to the Hall of Fame had he not done what he did and and boosted his numbers because the the rest of his career was so off the charts great anyway. But you know, the issue is, and I wrote an article many years ago about this. It's less about that and more about the players who were diminished because of those numbers. And the guy I always think of is Fred McGriff, who was a bit of a contemporary of his, you know, hit tons of home runs. You look at their matching numbers up until the point where Bonds was under this scrutiny and they were pretty similar. And so it's, it's less about that he had the performance to get there, but it's more about how it diminished the performance of those few people who yeah. weren't doing that. And that's, that's where it gets a little greasy. But for me, I, you know, I think that you have to overlook that at this point, him and Clemens need to go in. And Guys, I know course, we're going to get, sorry. He, as, as you know, you can just imagine that's going to be one hell of an emotional speech at Cooperstown if uh, Barry Bonds does eventually get uh, voted in. But yes, moving on onto the Canadian border, shall we? Just very quickly. Well, I was going to say, well, I know we're going to talk about the wild card a little bit later in the show, but uh, as it stands, uh, the Blue Jays have done exactly what you said they were going to do and, and, and have made a charge, and they are actually now in, in the postseason. Will they be allowed to play baseball in Canada if they make the postseason? Uh, yes, they will. Uh, but the, the question is, if you're a, a traveling supporter, if you're a fan, and, and if the Blue Jays make it deep into the playoffs, can you travel to yeah. Chicago? Can you travel to... Well, wherever it where, was, where Houston, uh, unknown um, right now. And as of as we speak, at the time of recording, there is a Canadian election happening. So there might be all change on that Canadian border. We don't know. We'll know in the morning whether Justin Trudeau or whoever is uh, in charge. Let's move it uh, on. Trivia time. Trivia time. Because at the time of recording, actually, literally about 45 minutes ago, I witnessed Salvador Perez on television hitting his 46th home run, which wow. means Silver Perez of the Kansas City Royals, catcher of the Kansas City Royals, means he's now the all-time leader for catchers in home runs in this single season. The next 10 on the list are all National League catchers. They just think, wow, well, what is it about AL catchers? that just they don't perform as well as the National League catchers? Unfair assumption to say. But my question to you is, which of these three catchers is the american league uh leader underneath cell or perez of course in most home runs in a single season is it a ivan pudge rodriguez yes or is it c b <laughs> b beg your pardon <laughs> and no particular order is it b terry steinbeck formerly of the oakland a's or is it c jorge Posada? Ooh. So yes, yeah, so which one of those three? Ooh, very good. Other than Salvador Perez, I mean, I, I'm shocked beautiful. Yogi Berra is not in there. I mean, you know, guy won MVP awards and have the same same pop. He, I well, guess. You know, he, he he hit quite a few as well. But uh, answer later on in the show. I've got no bell. I've got no waffle. But we're moving on. Bing. Thanks, buddy. Right. Well, better one up is uh, as always uh, time for the news roundup. Okay, well, our first story, guys, I didn't actually see this, although I did read about it, was the, the um, mashup between the, the two Padre legends that are Tatis Jr. and Mercado. Um, and this all kicked off, I believe, because Tatis was, was struck out and disagreed with the umpire, etc. And, and apparently Manigan got into his face. And my understanding, Jesse, and I'm sure you know more about this than I do, was saying, it's not all about you, which isn't the most complimentary thing to say to anybody. So can you expand on this story for us? Yeah, I mean, it was a bit mixed. He did say that, but he also said, everyone knows you're the best player out here. You got to focus. And that's what leaders have to do. I I am actually very supportive of Machado in this situation. I've had to do this with players before. You lose focus. You can never... There is a famous, it's it's cliche, never take your bat out into the field. It's like what they always say in baseball. And he was doing that. And it was Machado's job to get him to refocus. 
and you know, which uh, Tatis Jr. is young and he's fiery and I didn't want to be told anything at this point because he is a master of the universe. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm with Machado on this one. Is it also, and let's be honest, representative of the fact that the Padres were pretty confident they would make postseason baseball at the beginning and uh, things just don't seem to be working out that well? Do you think that they're feeling the pressure? A hundred percent. Uh, and, you know, it hasn't been, I mean, the offense to a certain extent, but the pitching has just been uh, what was supposed to be their greatest strength, that they had depth more than five pitchers down. I mean, you watch yeah. you Jarvish's second half of the season, and he's just fallen off the rails. And it's it's hard to stomach. They've had a lot of injuries. That's been an issue, too. But a lot of teams have had a lot of injuries this year. Uh, it's a bit surprising. Um, it's going to be interesting to see whether their manager, Jace Tingler, sticks around whether they feel they need a change at the top because they didn't perform you know when you have high expectations good but not great performance doesn't get the job done so the offseason will be interesting for the Padres and they're not out of it yet they could still make the postseason and they certainly have the talent if they get in to to make a run yeah yeah their their form at the moment though as of recording tonight Monday night they're uh, two and eight lost the last three and they're three and a half games back and that's just in the wild card race let alone in the divisional race okay well moving on um, let's talk about Vlad and Shohei uh, here's a question for you boys if Vlad wins the triple crown then surely he has to win the MVP and yet we've been talking about Shohei being a shoe in for the MVP what are we going to do yeah, I, this is a really tough one. I, I always feel like the tie goes to the player on the better team, that if they help carry their team over the top, that that needs to be part of the calculus for MVP, which would make me lean towards Vlad. But the argument for Otani is that his season is unprecedented in the history of Major League Baseball. Yeah. People have won triple crowns before. No one has ever had the combination of pitching and hitting season that Otani has had. His performance as a player two-way player is unprecedented and so to me despite the fact that i would typically lean towards the player who helped his team get over the top and it looks like you know toronto has a really good chance of making making the postseason i have to go with otani because it's a it's a season unlike any other in the history of major league baseball i'm inclined to agree eric what do you think okay i mean i it's you say that there's been we've seen triple crowns before that's true but if Vlad does win the Triple Crown this year, if. That'll only be the third time in, what, 55 years? So... And that's that's three more times than a pitcher yeah, has had okay. the hitting season that Otani has had, or hitters had the pitching season that Otani has had. Had the, Angels, the had the Angels have been on the cusp of the playoffs, like, even just missing out narrowly? Yeah, but it's like... Right, right. That, that's the argument, right? That's the argument yeah. that, you know, all things being equal, you go for the player on the better team. But... As great as a triple crown season is, if he gets it, it's just not the same. I mean, Otani's year, it's important for baseball in a sense. I would make that argument because Otani is such a star. What he's done is so important to the game that you need to even put a bigger Klieg light onto it because it's just, it's amazing. It really is. I hear you. Do you know what astounds me, boys? He's, to date, as of Monday night, he's he's played in 142 games. When you consider that he's hitting and he's pitching, you know, every five days, um, Vlad's played in 148. So he's only missed six by comparison, um, and he's two run home runs behind. I, I mean, I agree with you. I think it's really hard to look beyond Joe. And yet, you're absolutely right about Vlad, Eric. The fact is, the Blue Jays are now in a in a wild card position, and it's almost almost through the leadership of young Vlad Jr. And what but, he's but, done post all-star break. Yeah, he has been amazing, but that whole lineup has been amazing. I mean, yeah. he has had a supporting cast. that has been incredibly impressive. Think about Otani and the team he's had around him. Yeah. Right. Trout's been out all season. Yeah. You look offensively. I mean, yeah, there's Jared Walsh very, has gone missing. Absolutely. Yeah, there's, there's very little there. So you could sort of flip that argument around to say that Otani's performance is even more breathtaking when you consider what he had around him. As well as he's a nine and two as a pitcher with 146 uh, strikeouts, and he's providing his own run support basically. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, well let's move it on. Uh, another legend on the mound, of course, is Max Scherzer, who's enjoyed a really good season after a few uh, injury riddled ones. Um, I mean, we've all known how good he is, but we've all questioned whether or not he still can do it because of his age. He's just joined the 3,000 uh, strikeout club. The big question then is who's next? Your thoughts, JC? I mean, I think it's going to happen. Uh, you know, I'm not sure who it's going to be because uh, I feel like that 3,000 strikeout 
land, that benchmark that's used to be sort of a huge part of your resume to get in the Hall of Fame has been devalued tremendously by the strikeout rates that we have now. And I think that you're going to find pitchers who are consistently, you know, having 200 strikeout seasons. I think you're going to see other pitchers doing that. 300 wins to me all of a sudden becomes a vastly more difficult benchmark to attain because yeah. of the nature of baseball now. Of course, uh, you know, Anorax, the analytics folks will say, who cares? Because wins is such a, a weird statistic. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I love Max Scherzer, a great player, you know, has won a World Series. But the 3,000 strikeouts to me, as great as it is, isn't, doesn't have the same cachet that it had a generation ago. But is he a future Hall of Fame, Eric? Uh, he will be. Uh, no doubt about it. I, I disagree, Eric. I mean, I think really, I think at this point, I think he needs to play more. I, I think that he needs more, more, more years of counting stats in other areas. I think he needs, you know, a little more success. I mean, he's won 190 games, 313 ERA. But you know, you know he, those he, are those are good statistics. He, he'll he'll, he'll, get, he'll get 200. He'll get 200 by the end of his career. That's that's pretty bar. Uh, a disaster, yeah. but you know. I mean, if, if he can give us good four more good years, I mean, that's that's what's interesting about the Hall of Fame, right? It's it's about what you do right at the end, unless you're in that select group of like Sandy Koufax and Roberto Clemente who had extenuating circumstances and get in for a short but amazing career. And for a guy like Scherzer, the, the rubber is going to meet the road when, from 36, which he is now, to 40. Can he put up a handful of really good numbers right at the end? There have been a lot of players who got to 36 and were like, wow, this guy is great. And then their career ends and you're like, well, you look at the numbers and it doesn't quite do it. Mm. I have to say in a season where I have never, ever struggled more from a fancy perspective than with, you know, picking out pitches that are consistent. Schertz's numbers are amazing. 15 wins. Not meant, I mean, I think he's a leader in the wins tally just over a two ERA. Um, I mean, know, I think he's, he's a, he's a Cy Young favorite, right? I'd, yeah. Um, I, I'd go over to the Dodgers yeah. when the Dodgers were stumbling and yeah. really sort of solidify that rotation for them. I think certainly his, you know, his push in the last month has taken him into prime position. I'd be amazed as it stands if he doesn't win the cycle. I agree, totally. Okay, what's uh, what's happening on the uh, Badu watch? A view to Akil, our dear friend. What's he been up to, Eric? Again, I haven't been very original in thinking up more puns for Akil Badu, but since we were last recording, he was seven for twenty-eight, still in a platoon role, uh, one home run, uh, but unfortunately within that time of since we last recorded also 12 strikeouts yeah uh, you know he hasn't been getting on base as much as he used to they're playing him in a different role but hey it's the end of the season That's i it. mean he's made it the whole year he's had a solid season he may be like on an all-rookie team somewhere you know i akil has 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 been our guy i mean he is yes. he's has been we we all need to do the proverbial hat tip to that guy He's uh, yeah. gone, he's gone past uh, 50, RB, uh, 50 RBIs in a season. Hey, you know, it's not the like. 50 RBIs, 55 runs, 13 home runs. His, his average isn't bad when you consider how bad the averages are this season. He's 257, 324 on base percentage. For a guy who's only played 113 games, uh, I think he's had a pretty good opening season. I think mum and dad will be very proud, and I'm glad we followed him. Okay, that's enough for our news roundup, guys. Let's move it on. <laughs> Up next is uh, second banner, and it's the wild, wild card race. I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say uh, about this. Um, and I have to say, Eric, the first thing I have to do, buddy, is tip my hat to you. You were the one that, that referenced the cards, and what a charge. They're the hottest team oh, in baseball man. right now. They've won their last eight, gone nine and one, and they are now three games ahead of Cincinnati, three and a half games ahead of the Phillies, and uh, the Padres and seven games ahead of the Mets in the NL wildcard race. They are well and truly looking postseason bound. It was, I, about, I, it was about I, three I, weeks I, ago. Sorry. Yeah, it was about three weeks ago where I grudgingly said, even though the Reds were, which I tipped to be in the wildcard spot, um, I, cause I was able, I looked at the schedule and I could foresee that the cards were going to do exactly what Cardinal baseball is all about. That's why they're in the wildcard spot right now. Yeah, but it, it still has to be incredibly shocking when you look at their trade deadline pickups and you th see Jay Happ and John Lester coming over. You think who, these guys are jokers, right? Like Happ had been beyond awful with the twins. Lester was showing his age plus 10. 
And these guys have come in along with Adam Wainwright, who has been Adam, an, absolute say, Adam Wainwright, yeah. an absolute revelation. I, I just, uh, I, I mean, I, I'm impressed, Eric, because I mean, I know that their schedule wasn't strong, but their pitching staff wasn't strong either. You also have to be really impressed with Nolan Arenado because a lot of times you get that, that drop off, that you know, drop off. You leave Colorado, you leave the rarefied air, you leave that big stadium, and you yeah. start pressing to try and put up similar numbers. And he's not an on-base guy, but the man hits for power. He plays insane defense um, between him and Paul Goldschmidt. I mean, this is a geriatric team, uh, and they, you know, they have some younger players too. And I'm not saying it's all geriatric, but they, you know, they have a lot of old guys that are really driving the squad. It's, uh, it, I'm not a Cardinals fan, but it is fun to watch because you like to watch the old guys give it one more good run, right? Yeah, at this rate, they might, they might even call in Johnny. You never know. So. <laughs> Let's not get over, out of control here. <laughs> Jesse, I want your thoughts on Dylan Carson, whether or not you feel that he has had a breakout season or is he on the verge of maybe having one next season? Because yeah, they keep talking I mean, about having a big future. Yeah, I mean, you look at that lineup and you have, I think you have five players who have an OPS plus over 100, which means they're above average and doing it, you know, beyond that. Uh, that has always been sort of the, the telltale for the cards is developing guys like, like, like Dylan Carson. I mean, guys who, um, you know, they're not big names. They're not the really heralded guys, but they come on and they're solid and they're strong. And then they develop into, you know, either stars or close to stars. So it wouldn't surprise me. Um, you know, the, the Cardinals have, have been very impressive. I mean, a, a real, real surprise, I think, of, of all the teams that are still in it. It's a shame uh, that he's not with us. Dave couldn't join us tonight um, because, he, again, we've, we've absolutely nailed it with some of our postseason tips of late because when we were talking about picking a side, if you remember a few shows back, we had to pick a side that weren't in the wild card position, but would be before the season's out. And he picked the Toronto Blue Jays. And they are now one and a half games ahead of the Yankees. They are two games ahead of Oakland, four games ahead of Seattle. Um, and uh, and obviously behind, again, behind Boston, but very much ensconced in that wild. And they, again, are a form team. They've won seven and three over the last 10. So uh, that, again, has come down. You mentioned it earlier, JC, down to, very much down to the hitting. Uh, which has just been on fire. Can you see them maintaining that position? Well, it's interesting because the Red Sox play the Yankees this week and the Rays play the, the Blue Jays. Yeah. So, you know, you've got those four teams, all, you know, a bunch of, I mean, the Rays have kind of run away with it, but, you know, four really good teams all playing and it's all going to sort of, sort of come to a four this week. You know, whoever wins, if the Red Sox or the Yankees get an advantage in that series or the Blue Jays are able to, you know, get on the better side of the Rays. I think that's really going to determine what's going to happen. You, the offense has been amazing, but Robbie Ray has also had just a, his breakout season. He's been this guy where the expectations year in, year out were so high for him. High strikeout rate, walk too many batters. You know, his ERA would always get out of hand as a result. And this year he's finally put it together with Toronto. And having that type of, of ace has been a huge difference maker for that team. I love putting you guys on the spot. Uh, I'm going to ask both of you very quickly, who do you think is going to win the AL? Who's going to be representing the AL in the World Series? As it stands, we've got Tampa, Houston, and the White Sox, obviously leading their divisions with Boston and the Blue Jays for the wildcard spot. Who do you think, out of that five, would uh, would triumph in the AL? I'll let Josh yeah. go first. <laughs> okay. I'll go with Houston. Um, you know, I think they've been a little bit under the radar this year and they've been fantastic. The White Sox have fallen off the mark. Uh, you know, I wish David were here so I could sort of razz him mercilessly. You know, when he was talking the big game about La Russa, I think they were, had the best record in the American League or close to it. And they've they've fallen off quite a bit. So I, I just don't think they're quite in form. So I'm, I'm going with Houston. Eric? Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to stick to my original prediction from a few weeks ago when I said Bay Area World Series. Remember that? It looks unlikely at the moment, but hey, it's it's not over yet. It ain't over till it's over. Well, uh, if you're interested, in <laughs> you my didn't view, pick anyone though. Aaron. No, I was, no, I said, I'll, are you I'll picking go. the A's? I'll, I'll say I'll, I'll stick with my B just to save face, or to make me look even more like an idiot later on. <laughs> I'm gonna say Bay <laughs> Bay Area World Series. No, no pick would make you look like an idiot. Yeah, you don't have to. <laughs> I've already got that, that face on. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I'm sticking with my original selection at the beginning of the season. I, I agree they've gone off the boil, but that's not surprising because their division is so useless. Um, but they've still got the best pitching stats in terms of runs conceded. And I truly believe when it comes to the postseason, that is the key factor. So I'm sticking with the Chicago White Sox. And, and, uh, and think- we, once again, give no respect to the Rays, right? Like, fantastic team. I know. Awesome done everything Rays. right. And then we're just, like, totally overlooking them. So I, I hope it's the Rays so that we can all look – as silly as Eric. So. But, but the only <laughs> team who've conceded more runs in the race, despite their amazing record in, in that top five, is Boston. So th- that's why I struggle. That's why I yeah. struggle to see them go all the way. Um, and they're off the boil as well. They've lost two, their last two, their four and six, last ten. So even though they've got the best record in the American League, um, I'm still not convinced. I'm still not convinced. Anyway, uh, well, that's the American League. Quickly, the National League, two of you, before we round this one up. Yeah, I mean, I'm still going with the Dodgers. I, you know, I know that that's that was a the easy pick at the start of the season. Yeah. People have doubted it. Uh, you know, I still feel they're they're a team built for the postseason. I feel that their offense has gotten a little better. Uh, you know, Trey Turner being there, uh, that's been a big question mark. But the, the pitching, just they have depth, and I think when you have shorter series, uh, that depth tends to shine. Eric? Uh, well, I'm still going to continue my, I'm either an idiot or I'm either a genius. And I'm going to still say that the Cincinnati Reds, under the leadership of Joey Votto, a man of good Canadian <laughs> stock, will surprise everybody. They surprised everybody a few weeks ago. Now they fall off uh, a well, bit. What about your Bay Area series, Eric? I know, no, no. I didn't say they're going to Wolves here. But they're, going to, they're going to be like a dark horse surprise. Well, that's not what we're And they just asking. narrily miss out. Narrily miss out. Well, so you're picking the Giants. Oh, you, so you're asking me again, Bay Area World Series. There you go. Okay, there you go. All right. Okay. That's fair. Well, I, and, I, and, and I, you know, I don't think that's a bad pick, by the way. Like, I, you know, that that bullpen, in the Giants bullpen, and just there, they just feel like a faded team this year. So I, I you know, good pick, Eric. I'm, uh, well, do you know what? I'm going to go with the Giants. I, I think they've earned it. I think what they've done defies logic, and uh, and I've loved it as a story. I've always had a soft spot for the Giants. Simple, whoever it is, guys, is going to be a very exciting um, World Series. Can't wait. And the wild card race as well has loads of race to run. Let's move it on. Seventh inning stretch time. Uh, who's doing the book this week? Is it you, Eric? Actually, you know what? Uh, because this is our short show, our uh, our speed round show. Because we're all busy. We have uh, Dave is busy. Josh has got to go back to work. There'll be no book of the week this week, but because I want to double down on first of all, Josh last week picked Baseball in the Garden of Eden, which is a very good recommendation, and I've actually ordered it because I've actually I found I found his review fascinating. For a change. Can, can, can I tell you one really exciting thing that happened to me this week? Go on. Which is the author of that book is John Thorne, and he posted a picture on Twitter. I know John in passing. He's the uh, Major League Baseball official historian. He posted a picture of his his library. It's this amazing library of like every it's like the hall of fame of, of books, you know, and baseball books. And I wrote, I said, what, what do I gotta do to get my book uh, you know in, in your library? He's like, it's already there. No. And so I was like, you've made my week. Thank you, John <laughs> Thorne. So, so I feel great honor that the official historian rated my uh, baseball in Europe book uh, enough to, to be in his. And now we're plugging him second week in a row. So he, has, he, he better actually uh, give you those. He's a great accolades. human being. So it's, it's worth doing that. So. Unlike us. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Retro Bates. I've got uh, all five of your books in my library, JC. Hey. You have five? <laughs> okay. Um, I've, written, I've written seven. So. Yeah, I didn't the particularly other like two those couldn't other be two. bothered. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> those two are in the toilet. Right. <laughs> um, the uh, one thing as well that we're going to just double down as well because it's going to lead in nicely to our, our pop culture reference. Um, our good friend uh, Steve Barton, who I believe is in your fantasy league, is, he is. not a Johnny. He's a top boy, top boy. Yeah, journalist extraordinaire uh, on these shores of the United Kingdom and Ireland. Um, but he actually pointed out to me when I reviewed the Wreck as in Vec book, the autobiography of Bill Vec, um, I sort of rattled on all these things that Bill Vec has done. And he said, I, I, I can't believe, he said, I I'd omitted the fact that he, of course, was also the owner of the Cleveland Indians and was groundbreaking in the way of making Larry Doby being called up in the American League, being the first one to break the color barrier in the American League. So 
Thank and, you, Seaburn, for, uh, and, for and the, the, the truth about Vac is he wanted to integrate long before Braintree exactly. even started things going. He really instigated that. I think that if he had have gotten his way, he would have been the first owner to break the color barrier. And, and that's the thing, because that's, that's why I want to double down again on Rec as in Vec, or Vec as in Rec, I should say, uh, as a book, because there's so much in there that Bill Vec has done that it's so easy to, to forget all, the, all his accomplishments. Uh, one of the things that Steve Barton uh, said as penance for me forgetting to mention uh, his, his ownership of Cleveland Indians and bringing up Larry Doby is that he, I have to mention a baseball song that his cousin wrote. Byron Hill uh, is Steve Barton's cousin, not Bartman, but Barton. Now, I don't know about you guys. I'm not really a country and Western music fan. Um, it's not, not there's anything wrong with it. It's just not my cup of tea. But this piece of music, which is apparently is, is, is it, if you integrate baseball, Christmas music, and country music all together, you get this song. Brother wants some wheels for his pickup. Sister wants a trip to Cancun. Daddy wants a new set of golf clubs. Mama wants a gold necklace. All I want from Santa is a genuine cowhide. Rawlings Pro Special. One autograph by Roy Halliday. If that's all I've got neath the tree Christmas morning, one gift will sure be. proper music you've played utter dosh on this show so far and now we've got some proper music oh uh, my god oh my god you oh didn't like god. it jc i loved oh it man. that was I, I don't want to disrespect anyone who's related to see barton totally great guy and i'm sure he's a great musician and every, you know there's subject but that was drek as in Vec. <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry that was just uh beyond the pale i mean man you've i'm just so sorry the i'm so sorry Gordon Gordon. I'm so sorry, Gord. Oh, yes, that was, that was written by Gord Bamford. Uh, I mean, people people said mean things about things I've done, so you know, I, he's probably you feel justified. Okay. No, I, I feel I feel I feel bad. I, don't, <laughs> I, don't wanna, I mean, you know, I'll take I mean, it back. You just slagged him off. I've just said something I nice know. about it, and I'll be the first to admit that I've slagged off every other song we've had, but with good reason. So good to see we've got some proper music on for once. Wait, wait, no, hang on. So, so, so you, you, you like the Christmas? I think it's a little, I did. It's a little no, I early. Did. It's a bit too early for Christmas music and Christmas. It's never, it's never a good time for country music. In my bit opinion. of humor. Nothing wrong with that. And of course, it references Roy Halliday, the Hall of Fame pitcher, who sadly died a few years ago in a, in a light plane crash that he was piloting. But, you know, even though it references the great Roy Halliday, I, I don't know. It's not yeah, like it's not happening. No. I, the video is painful too. I mean, I've watched the video for but, like I, I I did my research. But hey, it was hey, let, let, let's just at the end of the show, Johnny will link to it. We'll play the whole song in its entirety, and we'll leave it to our listeners and viewers if it's their cup of tea. And, and, and Gord, I know Gord's a tremendous artist. I don't want to disrespect it. It's just it's not. I guess it's not my cup of tea. JC, see, he's he's Steve Barton's cousin. He's obviously a top boy. I oh, know Byron Hill, who wrote the song with Gord. Anyways, it's, oh, was he? Uh, it's, a long, <laughs> it's a long tenuous link. But <laughs> moving on. Moving on. Okay. Uh, right, we need a trivia answer. What's next? Okay, well, I ask because. Uh, uh, the American League catchers, for some reason, aren't as prolific as National League catchers as far as hitting home runs are concerned. Very tenuous. Uh, but I ask you, which of these American League catchers is second to Salvador Perez in most home runs in the American League in a single season? Was it A, Pudge Rodriguez? Was it B, Terry Steinbeck? Or was it C, Jorge Posada? Uh, Johnny Gold. Okay, I'm going to go first. So I have very clear memories of Pudge many seasons ago when I was playing fancy baseball, scoring the most okay. home runs in spring training. How about A, B, or C? So I picked him up thinking this is going to be his season, and he ended up, I think, with three in the whole of the regular season. He was useless, so I'm never going to pick Pudge. So I'm going with the legend that is Posada. Jorge okay. Posada for me. Yankees legend. I don't know why in the back of my head I'm thinking Terry Steinbach. Like I, I have no idea why I would I would put that in there and think that that was the case, but I might as well go for it. So, in no particular order. Okay, we have Jorge Posada. 
with 30 home runs in a single season. Okay, well, that's not going to be a winner then, is it? He did that in, 2000, he did that in 2003. Okay. Terry Steinbeck in 1996 hit 34. Well done, JC. No, it could be, could be Pudge. And Pudge Rodriguez in 99 hit 35. Ah, there you go. So he um, doesn't just screw my fancy baseball season up. He screws me up in the flipping trivia yeah, as well. Yeah, and I love the fact that you said it couldn't be him. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, no, but, I didn't say it could be him. I said I'm not going to pick him because he he did me in. And so I'm not going to give him a credit that he and clearly look where deserved. He got you. Look where exactly. He got you. Exactly. Okay. I'm moving on. Okay, it's a, short show. We're, it's a short and so, guys. So we're not going to do anything on the mailbag this week. But what we are going to do is quickly reference the MLB UK community get together at the weekend. Uh, it was lovely. I uh, popped down. Eric was there as well. Uh, what's the name of the place again? It's in Stratford, Eric. You know, it's the, it's, it's, it's the Homer and House in, in uh, Westfield Mall near the yeah. food court uh, in uh, Stratford. That's right, and uh, in, near the mighty West Ham London Stadium. Uh, the, the we had bad I, I have I have really good footage of Johnny in the batting cages. Actually, I even used his slow mo. He, he did pretty well. And five I even, home runs, JC. Five home runs, big guy. I've seen those batting cages. They're not equated to real home runs, <laughs> and I've seen your swing before. It is four parts cricket, a quarter part baseball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no you're, you're absolutely still, right. Still it's... got under there, and and I, I'm proud to say I didn't go in the batting cages because I. Ate my body weight in Philly cheesesteaks. Nice. And hey, weren't those cheesesteaks pretty damn they good? They were very good. They're very good. As well as the, and at the Homer and House, they give you ice cream sundaes and batting helmets, just like the old days in baseball. And, uh, and Eric, one other thing we should mention about uh, the British baseball community, two other things, actually. I was just going to uh, bring you to that. I was going to let you lead this up because... The European Championships completed. We mentioned uh, that they, the UK, the GB team started well, uh, beating France. Um, they happen to win the right games. They only won two games in the tournament, which is the fewest number of wins since 1991 tied, but they won the right games and they finished sixth, which is actually the best performance in terms of, uh, where they finished in the standings since 2007, the year after I left GB. And of course they won a silver medal that year. So, uh, tremendous credit to all people who are involved with that program, uh, really you know, a fantastic result in terms of the standings. And uh, I hope they build on it. That's and right. then the other, the other big news this, this week uh, was it was the first women's baseball championship in the UK was held in 80 years. And the Bells won. They beat uh, the London side uh, to win that first championship in 80 years for women's baseball. It's great to have women's baseball back. I feel like there's been such great momentum for it in the UK. And uh, I hope this is the start of many, many championships that are contested uh, in that discipline. Absolutely. I implore everyone to like go to bsuk.com to find out more and also follow the GB uh, baseball team um, on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, they've, they've made this country proud. I saw the tweet, by the way, which you like, Josh. The Bells Baseball. We did it. National champions. Hashtag WB UK. Where are the Bells Base, buddy? Uh, I mean, I know that uh, Paul Vernon's very involved with them. Uh, it's it's more to the south. I don't know exactly where they practice. Uh, Mark Mills is another coach there. And I know a number of their players, Amy Trask, played with uh, her brothers. Uh, Paul Vernon's uh, niece, Jessica Vernon, is on that team. Uh, it's just, I, I actually did a, a catching clinic over Zoom during uh, COVID days with them and just uh, their desire to get better and their work ethic uh, was about as unparalleled as I've seen in, in the British baseball scene. So a lot of credit uh, that hard work pays off and same for the GB team as well, too. What, one of the, the big factors for GB having the success they had, even though they only won two games, was that they were playing Russia in uh, one of the pool games and they fell back seven to nothing when you fall back that much, you could easily just sort of drop your head. They battled back. They ended up losing seven to six and they were able to actually make it through into the, uh, the, the medal round because of run differential. If they hadn't have clawed their way back with that level of grit, they wouldn't have even had a chance to perform as well. And it might've been a very different situation. And that's just tremendous respect for that attitude and that, that plain uh, approach. 
So obviously it's been a, a wonderful week uh, in the baseball community here in the UK. So a huge thanks all round. Congratulations to our uh, winning players uh, and a big thanks to the MLB community guys that got us down. George, who I know is a big uh, organiser and was very kind to Eric and to myself. And we met a few of the other guys down there as well and they were all very nice. Um, and we do implore you when they do another one, do get involved if you can come down. Uh, it's a great venue four different screens, four different games going on. There's the cages. Um, and if only for the Philly cheesecake, which was... Uh, absolute cheese steak. Cheese steak. What did I say? Cheesecake. Yeah. <laughs> cheesecake sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 need, I need that too. Actually, but, oh, yeah. yeah, you probably would. Wouldn't you, Russ? Absolutely. Well, huge, huge thanks all round. Do get in touch when we're going to have a longer show. Obviously, um, usual details at Johnny and Josh, uh, and of course the Johnny and Josh show on on Facebook at Johnny and Josh is our Twitter subscribe. handle. Um, yeah, hit those like. subscribe buttons down the bottom. Hit the like buttons down the bottom. The more we get, uh, the more success we can have, and the the brighter the future will be. Um, don't forget also behind home plate at bhp pod if fancy baseball is still your thing there's still a couple of weeks left in the season if you need those last minute tips well james holden my co-conspirator is the man you need to listen to at bhp pod is the twitter handle we look forward to having your involvement in that and don't forget also the nat coom show at the nc show all part of the ted fred stable we're on twitter we're on facebook we're on instagram we're on youtube we're everywhere we're everywhere guys um we're the wind that's it from us. Thank you for listening. We'll be back with a slightly longer show, hopefully episode 26 of the Johnny and Josh show. Till then, take care, stay safe, stay well, and we leave you with this legendary song from Gord Bamford. Enjoy. Brother wants a tattoo for Christmas Sister wants a ring in her Daddy wants a new big screen TV Mama wants a tummy tuck All I want's a baseball glove Brother wants some wheels for his pickup Sister wants a trip to Cancun Daddy wants a new set of golf clubs Mama wants a gold necklace All I want from Santa is a genuine cowhide Rawlings Pro Special One autograph by Roy Halliday If that's all I've got neath the tree Christmas morning One gift will sure be enough If I get a Everywhere Daddy's being real good to mama Mama's being extra sweet I'm just hoping Santa brings A genuine cowhide Rawlings Pro Special One autograph by Roy Halliday If that's all I've got Neat the tree Christmas morning, one gift will sure be enough.